the Mac East 2022 Conference Division Preview will start off with, da, 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 get this put up on the screen here, Kent State. The Kent State Golden Flashes. They were 7-7 seven and seven last year. Their head coach, Sean Lewis, of course, their conference record was 6-2 and two. this year. Uh, they are projected to go five and seven, according to SP Plus. Now, along with that, uh, you look at their returning production. They are number one seventeen in the country, according to Bill Conley over at ESPN. That's fifty three percent offense. No, it's forty four percent. Number one twenty one defense was never that great last year. They were returning sixty two percent. Uh, let's talk about big losses. Quarterback Dustin Crum, the wide receiver Nikeem Johnson. They lost two starting offensive linemen. Who are the top players coming back here? Running back Marquez Cooper, cornerback Montre Miller, and then, of course, you got wide receiver Dante Cephas. Uh, let me tell you what you need to know about the offense, all right? What we're curious about is can the presumptive starting quarterback here, uh, Colin Schlee, I hope that's the name or the way that you say the name. Can he find a way to replace Dustin Crum's productivity? Crum was uh, was a fantasy football favorite as far as college fantasy football goes. Uh, when they lose the top quarterback, two of their top three wide receivers, multiple starting offensive linemen, like you know what you're going to get from a Sean Lewis offense. But uh, what is what are we going to get from the quarterback? Right, we know what Lewis wants to do. He was Dino Babers' guy for a long time. Um, can you just replace that? Like we've seen this happen a lot of times, Chris, with Hugh Freeze and and other of these offensive minded coaches, Gus Malzahn, etc. We know what the system is. We know what they're doing. Do you think that this bunch, even with only forty four percent returning production, can you just put new guys in and expect that offense to flow like that? Uh, to an extent, I do trust that they can do that. Um, Especially in this maybe conference, all- maybe right. Yeah, I was about to say at, at a national level, that's a that's a hard thing to, to to predict. But yeah, in this conference where we don't think there's a whole lot of strength, um, you know, I, I think they're going to be okay. I, I like them uh, this year better than I have. I, there's a world where in systems like this, I I never worry about replacing the quarterback. I just don't because I've seen it, yeah. too many of them. I've seen too many of them. I know it sounds crazy because it's the most important position in sports, the most important position on the team, but I've seen too many of them just come in and look exactly like the guy they replaced that was the best that that school had ever seen. And, that, and it's that's like true. the offenses just get better, the system just gets tighter, and the position players, the role players, make more of an impact or have more of a, 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 a determining factor on you know success or, or failures of the team than the quarterback does. I, I tend to agree with you. I think that the offense is going to be just fine. They were number 21 in offensive PPA per drive last year. The defense, that's where we have had an issue. They were number 122 in the country in defensive PPA. PPA, by the way, is predicted points added. Uh, they were 117 in defensive rushing success rate, number 116 in defensive passing success rate. Uh, but they did do something to try and get that thing back on track and that is they went and hired defensive coordinator Jeremiah Johnson from Northern Iowa. In FCS, Northern Iowa has been pretty brutal on defense. They have been off, like, not awful, excuse me, awesome. Like, they've been really, really strong on that side of the ball. Uh, They are the kind of team that plays physical on both sides. They like to run the ball down your throat, and their defense really lights you up. Uh, defensive backs, Montre Miller and Nico Bolden, they should lock down the secondary. They need their defensive linemen uh, like Zayn West and C.J. West, along with the linebackers, Harmon and Coleman. You need them to step up here. Uh, you know, it, if they can mirror last season's close game record, they went 4-0, then they're going to be really successful, right? 4-0 in, in one possession games last year. Uh, they have dominated the MAC since Lewis got into uh, into the league. They have 14-6. and six since 2019, uh, if you can find a quarterback that can run this offense, then they should be pretty good. The issue, of course, being the ridiculous non-conference schedule where they play at Washington, at Oklahoma, and at Georgia, and then they've got LIU as uh, as their lone home non-conference game. Uh, the schedule looks, you know, feasible. Like, I've got them going 6-6 six and six here. I think 6-6 I think six and six would be a really, really good year, especially after losing all that production. 
Yeah, so I've got them seven and five. So I've got them one game better than you. That's it. But, like, I don't think they're going to miss much of a beat. I think they're going to lose all those non-con games except for, you know, the the hyphenated school. And then other than that, you know, the, you know they'll, they'll be competitive and, uh, and should have a chance to win all of the mat games. I don't think they will win them all, but, but I think they'll be competitive. And uh, I definitely think they have the easier side of the division to, yeah. you know, yeah, they to, do. Do, to do a much better <laughs> job against, you know, their division. Yeah, I could uh, I could get with you on that. I can get with you on that. All right, so you've got them seven and five. I've got them six and six. Uh, yeah, I think I, I don't think we're going to see a lot of uh, really high win totals for the teams in the MAC East. I'll, I'll certainly say that. Let's move ahead, and we are jumping into the Miami Ohio Redhawks. So we'll toss it up on the screen here, and Miami of Ohio. Seven and six last basically year. Basically, going in order of you know how they finished last year. That's yes, that is the order that I'm going okay. here. Yeah, I, I was trying to figure out like the math on how we're doing this. Yes, the order of their their finish from last year. So uh, Chuck Martin, okay. the head coach here, seven and six last year. They went five and three in the conference. I'm going to do this for every conference. Uh, doing it in alphabetical order, uh, just a little old. Like I. <laughs> I'm going to tell you about that. I wanted to do it a little bit different this year. So going in the order of finish from 2021. That's that's the way I'm going here. Uh, so yes, the Red Hawks, 5-3 and three in conference last year. Their projected SP Plus record this year, 7-5. and five. Uh, They are only returning 47% of their defensive players, or their defensive production. That's number 120 in the country. Their offense, though, does bring back 76%. That's number 36. So that's uh, that's pretty good. They lost wide receiver Jack Sorensen. They lost uh, their safety, Sterling Weatherford, defensive end Cameron Butler, linebacker Ivan Pace Jr., etc. Uh, the top players for this year, the guys that they are going to lean on, the quarterback, Brett Gabbert, the wide receiver. Uh, let, let's see if I can do this. Mac Hippenhammer, <laughs> linebacker Matt Selepek, and the safety Michael Dowell, who is a transfer from Michigan State. Uh, I think he's going to play a key role here. They lost a lot on the defensive line. That's where we're going to start with Chuck Martin because that's how his teams have typically lined up and done well with. Um, they lost a lot to, to graduation, a lot to transfer. I mean, they've always been their best at stopping the run, and now you got to just kind of plug holes and, and figure it out. Uh, the question here is can the incoming transfers, new, you know, new names, find a way to keep this defense running top flight? Uh, they're going to need to find a way – to limit opponents in the passing attack because they were number 86 in defensive passing success rate last year, number 93 in defensive explosive rate given up. Uh, so they they were good, you know, against the run, but teams could throw on them, which is why, you know, they ended up 7-6 and six last year. Uh, and, you know, they won their bowl game. They beat North Texas, so I guess that's good. Uh, you know, projected SP Plus record this year is 7-5. and five. Uh, You look at the schedule, you know, again, with these MAC teams in their non-conference, they're going to collect checks. I understand, but they play at Kentucky, uh, Robert Morris versus Cincinnati, and then at Northwestern. Like it, they maybe they got a shot against Northwestern. Uh, I would imagine they'll handle Robert Morris. You know the the big thing here is going to be Gabbert coming back for his senior season. The quarterback, the offensive line needs to reestablish the run game this year because they were not good last year. Number ninety six in rushing success rate, which is strange for that bunch. But uh, but Gabbert is is a good foundational piece. I'm I'm curious your thoughts on this bunch. We we both like Chuck Martin, right? We we've yes. always kind of liked him. But if you don't get that offense going, and now your defense takes a hit, this could get a little tricky. Uh, what would what say you? Yeah, I, I I like this team. I think they're gonna be okay. Uh, Kind of only in the concept that I don't think they're non cons that super hard. I mean, obviously, Kentucky and Cincinnati are big time. Um, not to upset our Northwestern boys, but Northwestern historically just does really bad against G5 schools. Uh, and <laughs> that, that you know, is Robert true. Morris doesn't scare me. So yeah. I'm actually counting that as a win for them. I got them seven and five. Uh, and once again, that is, I think they are better than the rest of the East, and I think they'll pull off one of these big um, non-con wins 
and that's strictly just the Northwestern Mac math that I've seen in the past. I could uh, I could see that. Um, they they do have a schedule that that lends itself to to helping, right? They've got Kent State, Western Michigan, Ohio, and Ball State all at home. Uh, yep. Defensive line is going to have to develop quickly, like very quickly. Oh, um, I- I agree, but but it's Miami of Ohio, man. They're, they're like these Midwestern small schools. Um, they're they're going to be able to get you know big guys that know how to tackle. They're not going to have the speed that you know power schools have, but but they got big strong dudes, and they usually are coached up well and, and can tackle. So defensively, I'm actually not super worried. I got you. I got you. See, so you've got them seven but, but and five. That's that's, that's strictly. Mac bias. That's all it is. is I've been watching the Mac for a long time, and and if you've got a lot of you know speed, you can sometimes make them look bad. But if you're going to match them power for power, it's really hard to blow one of these teams out. I do want to know who is going to be uh, the wide receiver for Gabbert. Right, his favorite guy last year, wide receiver Jack Sorensen. Uh, he averaged over 108 yards per game last year. You know, who is going to be the guy? And then we've got to figure out, can the offense identify a lead back? I would imagine they'll come up with something. Like, you and I trust Chuck Martin to be able to get this thing done, right? You, you've got him 7-5. Yeah, well, yeah. Like, I've got 6-6. Six and six. Would 7-5 and five surprise me? Absolutely not. I, this is a and good team. Here's the thing. I don't know that one guy is going to do that. I don't know that one guy is going to replace them. You know, could they have three or four guys, you know, Add up to all those yards. I don't know if the offense takes a huge hit. They just find somebody else that's getting open. I don't think you're wrong. I don't think you're wrong. And it could be a rotation of guys. We'll move on to Ohio. And, of course, the Bobcats, after Frank Solich retired, uh, did not do so well under Coach Tim Albin last year, uh, or Albin, however you want to say it. Went 3-9 and nine last year. Three and five in the conference, so they lost all of their non-conference games. They they looked putrid in a lot of them. A uh, big part of this was they were not explosive on offense, and their defense just gave up whatever anybody wanted at any point. Their their passing success rate on defense was number one twenty two. That ain't good out of one hundred thirty teams. Um, they lost a ton of guys. Yep. Uh, quarterback Amari Rogers. Uh, the running back, Demontre Tuggle, wide receiver, Cameron Odom, left tackle, TJ Jackson, uh, Evans, the defensive end, Cox, the wide receiver. Uh, but they do have, you know, some top players for us to talk about. O'Shawn Allison, the running back, he is uh, he's coming back here. Linebacker, Cannon Blouser, defensive tackle, Rodney Matthews, and, of course, the quarterback, Curtis Rourke. Um, that was Nathan Rourke's little brother. That's the one that everybody kind of thought was going to be the lead guy anyway. And, and he did get a lot of play last year. This defense was awful. Their PPA margin was awful last year. Uh, net points per drive was awful, number 101 in the country. Turnover margin was number 116. They couldn't figure out what they wanted to do. And part of that might have been the fact that Frank Solich retired, you know, right before fall camp, really. I was about like to say, he, re- he, he left real or, uh, not early, real late, real late yeah. in, the, in the schedule. And that's... That's hard on a team, man. That's definitely hard on a new coach. Oh, especially. Uh, the offensive coordinator, Tim Albin, had been there for a long, long time. He knows that offense. He's been running Solich's thing for, I mean, well over a decade. But it's still difficult, you know, to to bring that in and to let him kind of just make the like all the decisions, right? That's what's so That's tough right. about it. Um, two of the rushers are gone. We'll talk about the offense here. Uh, one of them is... Quarterback Armani Rogers, he was their third leading rusher. Um, or sorry, he was their second leading rusher. The third leading rusher was quarterback Curtis Rourke. So you got to find a running back that's going to step up. I would imagine it's O'Shawn Allison. You know, we'll see. Uh, they ran the ball fifty eight percent of the time in twenty twenty one. Are they going to open up the passing game to to create some more explosive plays? Um, it, you know what they'll what they'll want to do. They've got Rice transfer uh, August Petrie the third coming in, and I would imagine that he is going to be able to do something big this year for that offense. He should be able to allow them to open it up a little more. On the defense, uh, they did hire new defensive coordinator Spence Novinsky, who was at Miami of Ohio as a co-DC and linebackers coach for the last four seasons. Uh, we saw what Miami of Ohio was capable of doing. Like He's he's a co-DC there. He should know how that bunch operates. How quickly can he install that new defensive philosophy? Um, 
It centers around stopping the run, pressuring the quarterback. Miami was number 54 in yards per rush defense last year, number 24 in sacks, number 8 in tackles for loss. They're going to be aggressive, I would imagine, under the new guy. Uh, linebackers, like they appear set with uh, Bryce Houston, Cannon Blouser, but is there enough talent? Is there enough depth? Um, you know, along the defensive line and the secondary in order for this bunch to be uh, successful. And I don't know the answer to that yet. Like, we'll we'll find out, I would imagine. Uh, keys to the season, for me, uh, defense needs to create more turnovers, actually slow down the opponent passing game. Uh, and then the offense needs to create explosive plays and not turn the ball over. Like, this this seems pretty cut and dry. Uh, don't get yourself beat. <laughs> what, what do you think about this bunch? Man, they're going to struggle. Uh, don't think they're going to be very good. I do think they'll take a step forward. And I don't. I think they'll be more competitive in games that that even they might not win. But but I think, like I said, they'll, they'll be on the more competitive side of the ball of of, of the outcome of the game. I got them. I got them four and eight. That's exactly where eight. I've got them. <laughs> so I don't. Like I said, not 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 great. But I think they'll look better than they looked last year. I do think defensively they'll be better because they can't almost be worse. Yeah. Um, and uh, and offensively, so so here's what what I like about the the kid from Rice coming in. Their second leading rusher last year was their quarterback. They're going to have the ability to open things up because I think they got somebody who can throw the football with a little more accuracy. He's going to sit back in the pocket, find the open guy. Um, where this goes to hell in a handbasket is if guys can't get open and he's not very accurate. Because he doesn't have the ability to run, it could get uglier. Well, no, he, he so he he can run. He's not uh, he's not Armani Rogers. Uh, well, he's not Rourke, Armani. That's, you know. what, okay, that's what I'm trying to say. They're gonna. He, I don't think you're going to run the same offense as you ran last year because you don't have that kind of ability. You might be right about that. That's uh, you. You might be onto something there. I'm. I'm very curious about it because they, they've got to do something to create some explosive plays here. Uh, yeah. But on the same thing, like I said, we talked about this. Like, they, all fit, they, they also just can't be as bad on defense as they were. Like, that's, oh. that's almost mathematically impossible. And, and so we just work under the assumption they're going to improve there. So yep. that, that means they're going to be more competitive and they're going to be in more ball games, which should lead to more wins. It's a tough schedule, I them, though. I got them one more win, but it's a tough schedule. Yeah. I, me and you talked offline about this. I'll say this now. Um, I think the Mac was was instructed because I've never seen them do this before. They've always gone on the road to a big Power 5 school, gotten a check, and, and played in a big stadium, you know, once, maybe twice a season. Almost every one of these teams are doing it three times this year. And, yeah. and I think – I think that comes from an administrative level of we're about to go get paid. These big schools are making a shitload of money, and it looks better on their resume to beat a MAC team than it does to beat an FCS school or, or, or somebody even lower. You know, yeah. maybe not lower than FCS, but lower than you know. There are conferences out there that aren't nearly as good as the MAC, and and let's go get us a check and help them get a little bit better win. I, uh, I, I think they agree. were instructed to do that because almost all of these teams have three of those big games on their schedule instead of two. And boy, man, that just – that's a hard pill it's to swallow. Brutal. Yeah, it, with Ohio – That's, that's like, tough. They've got FAU coming in, uh, but I still think I that's see, a really I difficult think, one. I think, like, I, about to, I think that's a tough game. I don't think they're going to win that game. Yeah, FAU comes to Ohio, uh, but then they go to Penn State. They go to Iowa State. And then they play Fordham at home before they start off Mac play on the road at Kent State. Like it's right. now this isn't Washington, rough. Oklahoma, Georgia, but it's tough. It's tough. Yeah, no, it, it is certainly that. We'll move on to the Bowling Green Falcons and Scott Leffler, the coach there, uh, it, it had the team looking fairly decent last year. Had that big upset win over Minnesota. I, you know. I don't know exactly what to make of it because when you look at the post-game win expectancy, eh, you know, it, it's tough to beat a team like Minnesota when you only have 192 yards of total offense in a game. But alas, they found a way to get it done. Um, went 4-8 and eight last year, went 2-6 and six in the conference. Their projected SP Plus record for this season is 5-7. and seven. 
They are number one in returning production in the country. 92% of their guys come back. Uh, 95% of their offensive production comes back. That is number one in the country. And their defense, 88% of their production comes back. That's number four in the country. Um, But having a bunch of returning, you know, experience doesn't necessarily matter if the guys are not good. How much can you reasonably expect them to uh, to improve just because they've had a bunch of reps, right? I think the team is going to still be okay, uh, but let's let's look at what they lost. They lost uh, the safety side, Dabney, um, and he transferred out. Uh, the right tackle, Jordan Murphy, and then the cornerback, Devin Taylor. Like, those are the big losses for them. But, I mean, they got a ton of guys back as far as their, their top players. Uh, linebacker, Darren Anders, tight end, Christian Sims, the quarterback, Matt McDonald. I don't know, you know, how great, but he's going to be a key part of that offense. Wide receiver, Austin Osborne, the defensive end, Brooks, the safety, Anderson. Uh, and then they got a Memphis transfer, the center, Jakari Robinson, and then a linebacker, DJ Taylor from Wake Forest is coming in. So they should have the dudes. I don't know that the roster strength is is great, but Bowling Green is in a much better position now than they have been at any point in Leffler's uh, era, right? In in all the years that he's been coaching sure. here, I think this is the best spot. Let's let's talk uh, about the offense. Um, Ten starters back on the offense, but will they improve? The team was number one twenty three in PPA per drive. They only averaged four point nine yards per play. Uh, the quarterback Matt McDonald he threw six touchdowns, zero picks in the last four game uh, last four games last year, going two and two in the process. They need a running back to emerge. What can Scott Leffler do on offense to help this team improve this year? Uh, or do you have man, an idea? I, I, <laughs> well, I, I don't. So I don't have them being very good. But once again, this is one of the situations where another year in the system and this guy, you've talked about this before, not being the guy there, went out, I think out of desperation, and grabbed all the transfers he could grab, hoping that that would be – the difference maker for him. Um, and, and man, I don't know that that's the answer because this is not like getting a bunch of P5 transfers going down to play with your school so they get starting time. You're taking other guys that aren't making it at T5 level and bringing them in. Um, I still got them 2-10. and 10. I think they're going to, you know, struggle to win football games. Uh, I, I don't know that you can build chemistry by just bringing in a bunch of guys that have never played together at all and hoping that it works. I, I might be wrong, but I've also been really down on this team for a long time. Well, I've, so they've got 10 starters back on the defense. Uh, they struggled against the run. They they played great. I was about to say, but how, how, how good are those guys? We have this conversation. Exactly, right yeah. Here. yeah. Bring, bringing a bunch of dudes back that sucked last year and, and really yeah. the, 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 the <laughs> equation to being good this year. They, I wouldn't imagine that all 10 will actually be starting this go-round, which, which could be interesting. Uh, but regardless, you got guys with experience and whatnot. They played great against the pass. Uh, they got 18 turnovers from opponents, so that was certainly helpful. They got playmakers at every level of the defense. That includes four defensive linemen with 360-plus snaps each. Some stud linebackers and defensive backs, etc. Uh, the keys to the season I've got here: keep the defense healthy, don't turn the ball over, clean up the penalties. They were number one fourteen in the country in penalties per game last year. Uh, you have got to find a way to improve this offense. Last year, I don't know if you remember this game. Leffler got ejected against Buffalo last year, and the offense average after he left better. the game. Uh, the offense averaged ten point five two yards per play. That was double or almost double, double more yeah. than every other game on the schedule. Yep. So <laughs> what can they take from that one game where Leffler was not in? What can they do to open this thing up and make it, you know, a little bit better? Uh, their offensive BPA per drive last year was 123. I mean, it, it, it's almost dead last. Their rushing success rate was number 119. Passing success rate was number 114. Uh, they were able to create some explosive plays, but my God, when you were that bad on everything else, uh, people almost don't expect you to do anything. So they were number 72 in that. Uh, this team, I think with the experience that's coming back, with some of the, the transfers that are coming in, I think they can be okay in some spots. This is another team that's got uh, a fairly difficult non-conference schedule. They play at UCLA, Eastern Kentucky, Marshall at home, and at Mississippi State. 
Uh, but the conference schedule sets up, you know, decent. I think they can win the game against Eastern Kentucky and then win three MAC games this year uh, just based on the schedule. I, I look for them to go probably four and eight. I, I think they're going to be about the same as they were last year, and they could be more competitive in some of these other games. The question for me is going to be, after you lose all of this experience next year, how how bad of a drop off will you get in 2023? Like that's going to be crazy to me. So you've got them at two and ten. I've got them at four and eight. We shall see. We shall see. So you got this them the team, same as last year. Yeah, I've got them the same as last year. Um, which is which is crazy. Like they were pretty good last year. Probably should have been better than four and eight. But also maybe probably. should have only been two and ten last year. Like that's the yeah. I was about, about to them. say. You know that Buffalo game should they have, should they have won that game? And Buffalo was bad last year. Like, yeah, let's just say it. Like they they weren't good either. And they really probably should have won, beaten. They, only, they they only won two conference games last year. Yeah, and they probably should not have beaten Minnesota, right? I mean, they yeah. beat them oh, no, fourteen no, to ten. No. Like that was a weird. That's right. One. Uh, so weird. All right, we got uh we got two more. Let's go ahead and knock these bad boys out. We got Buffalo, the Buffalo Bulls. Of course, head coach Maurice Lingist is the new head coach, and he took over. Again, this is another one that was late in the cycle last year, right after spring practice. Lance Leipold decides that he's going to Kansas. Uh, Great for Kansas, terrible for Buffalo. And this will let you know just how quickly the culture of a program can can drop off, right? They lost a bunch of dudes to transfer and whatnot, and we get that. But uh, if your culture is really, really good, and you keep at least some of those guys around, then you could maybe make something work, but they went, they went four and eight last year, and maybe should have been worse. They were three eight and one against the spread last year, uh, two and six in conference. Their projected record this year is six and six according to SP Plus. Uh, returning production, they're number one hundred nine in the country, fifty three percent offense. They're number one hundred eight in returning production. They're going to have to redo this on the fly. Like the running back Kevin Marks, the quarterback Kyle Van Trees, they're both gone. Uh, the cornerback Washington, the defensive end Eric Black, you know, let's let's talk about the offense here. I I don't know what to make of it. Uh, the quarterback I think is maybe going to be Matt Murray. Uh, he at least got some quarterback snaps last year. Uh, transfer wide receivers Justin Marshall coming in from Louisville, Booby Curry from Arizona. They should help because they are talented. Uh, offensive line has two guys returning that played over 800 snaps each last year. Uh, they have one transfer that's coming in from UConn, Sidney Walker, that played over 500 snaps last year. I'm, at, you know, they got two transfers that hadn't really played a whole lot that are going to be on the offensive line. Uh, this offense was not good last year. Number 127 in, in explosive play rate. Uh, give me your thoughts here. I I don't know what this team is going to be. Like, we're still waiting on Lingus to to kind of show us what his culture is, what his what his team building is going to look like. Where do you think they're getting the six and six, the SP plus? Where so do you think that comes from? SP plus basically throws in uh, like team history. So uh, history of the team over the last That's five a, years. So, so there, there, there lies the problem there. Yes. We just, we just can't do this. I bitch about this every year that, that I, I don't care who your grandfather was. I don't care who you were last year. It doesn't matter, all right? This team wasn't good last year, and I think they're going to be worse this year. I do, because yeah. that offensive line, what like what What do we know Buffalo as historically? A uh, great uh, run yeah. football team, right? Yes. Like, they'll hang 500 yards on you on the ground. And now you're telling me they weren't good last year, and their offensive line, we believe, is worse this year than they were last year. How in the hell do we think they're going to be better this year than they were last year? How does that math work? And now you could say it's because he's actually going to have a full off season with his guys. Maybe that's it. But the problem is mm. you have lost a lot of guys. So yeah, you know that's that's one way to look at it from a positive perspective. I'm with you. I've got them going three and nine. Uh, their non conference schedule here. Uh, they play da, 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 at Maryland, Holy Cross, at Coastal Carolina, uh, and then they play at UMass. So they've got what looks like two wins in the non conference. Yeah, but, they got a couple of good ones, but you know, they got a couple of doozies. They got Akron at home, but they've also got Miami of Ohio. They've got Toledo. They've got Kent State at home. And then on the road, they've got at Ohio, at Bowling Green, at Central Michigan, at Eastern Michigan. Like, the road schedule does them no favors, and the home schedule certainly does them no favors. 
Like this is yep. this is tough for this bunch. Um, the secondary, I by the way, them, I got them the same thing. Yeah, three and nine. By going the way. three and nine. I ha- I'll tell you this: I had them two and ten, and I looked at it a second time and thought they're going to get one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think they'll get one of these. Several of these games are going to be coin flip games. You know, I, I, yeah. Are they going to win all of them? No. Are they going to lose all of them? No. So I got to kind of give them another one. But yeah, that's kind of how I did the math on it. The uh, the secondary here is is full of transfers. Just absolutely full of them. So I'm curious what they're going to look like. Um, you know, are they going to know the schemes well enough to be effective? That's going to be the question. The front seven, uh, it's stacked. I mean, they've got eight guys that have played over 200 snaps uh, last year. But, like, you know, how how much better can they be? Because the defense was number 114 in PPA per drive. They were number 130 in defensive explosive play rate allowed. Like, how much better can they get? And I don't know the answer to that. So I, I've got them three and nine as well. Um, you know, Linkus does actually know his roster now, so so that's good. Um, you know, he spent last April prepping to be the co-DC at Michigan. So <laughs> this is this is a completely different thing. Uh, if they figure out who the quarterback's going to be, let the defense set the pace, slow the explosive plays, generate more explosive plays, and then fix their turnover problems, um, it may be. Like this is still a really tough job. Do you remember how tough this, of... this Buffalo job was before Leipold took over? I mean, this was a tough ass well, yeah. job. Well, no, it was a bad job then, and it wasn't just a tough job. It was a bad job. It was a job nobody wanted. Uh, I think Leipold changed that and 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 let people know that you know this is not you know such a bad place to work. Um, well, but you had to come I in just... and do it a different way, right? So my yes yes you had to, you've got to you can't play the game straight up if you can't get the talent that the other guys have. But the issue that I have with Buffalo in this is, um, oh I'm sorry I I have Buffalo four and eight maybe I, but anyway that's like I said one or two games here or there uh, irrelevant. Um, <laughs> my my issue my issue with Buffalo and and you say like oh well he'll have a whole off season like he should know his guys. By the end of last year, like when you get to play in football games in November, you don't get the excuse anymore that, well, I started the season, you know, late and don't know these guys and we don't have chemistry. No, no, no. no. You're no longer a freshman. You're no longer a rookie. You're no longer a first time head coach. Like you've been doing this job for four or five months now. You know these guys. You know what they can do. You know what they can't do. And if you're not looking better then, than you did in April or May or, you know, when you took over, obviously, or the season started in August, September. Like, then that's on you. Then that's all on you. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can totally understand that. They uh, they lost their last four last year. That was to Bowling Green at Miami of Ohio. Yes. Northern Illinois and at Ball State. All, um, all conference games. Yeah. And, and that's when you no longer get the benefit of, well, I got here late. I was hired late. Like, I this you know, whatever. Like, if it's a thing where I didn't recruit these guys and these aren't my guys, that's one thing. But if you're just talking about those guys are just more experienced, but they're still the same guys that are there, those guys in, in this August shouldn't be a whole lot different than they were last November. Two of and their, you, got, you got washed last November. They had four wins last year. Two of them were by one point. By so, one point. Yeah, 27 to 26. early in the season. When you supposedly were fresh and green. Well, they, they beat Ohio in October, like October uh, 16th, right? 27-26. That was the last win, though, wasn't it? Uh, no, they played at Akron the week no, after that, and it was 45-10. to 10. That's right. Like, <laughs> okay. Tom Arth was on his way out. But I mean, to, but, but like you said, they, they walked they walked it the rest of the season. Though. Yeah. Like, they didn't win another game. Yeah, after after getting just steamrolled by that Bowling Green team, which was and this is so And this weird. is not like power teams that you were playing. These are other just conference teams yeah. that weren't great last year. Like some of these teams were 500 or, you know, barely over 500. How crazy that in, in game three of the year last year uh, on the schedule, they, they lost to Coastal Carolina by three points. It was 28 25. That was such a weird game. Yep. So, all right, let's, uh, let's well, talk about that. That's when we kind of thought that maybe they would be, you know, like not decent? too far off of what Lance had. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's we what thought we thought. Coastal was really good. Yeah. Ay, ay, ay. All right. All right, last one. Last one. To the Akron. Seller. You better believe it. The Akron Zips. Let's talk about the changeover. All right. Tom Arth is gone, and they have hired in 
former Oregon offensive coordinator, former Mississippi State head coach, and former Penn State offensive coordinator slash Fordham head coach way back when, Joe yep. Moorhead takes over a 2-10 and ten football team that went 1-7 and seven in the conference last year. Their projected SP Plus record this year is 3-9, and nine, and I got to tell you, I don't see them getting to three. This roster is not a very good roster. Uh, now, I will tell you, their returning production is number 18. Uh, yeah, number 18 in the country. 76% of their production is coming back. It's number 78 on offense and number two on defense. But the defense was an absolute dumpster fire last year, Chris. Number 129 in defensive PPA per drive. Number 130 in defensive rushing success rate allowed, and number 125 in defensive passing success rate allowed. Uh, people may look at these numbers and say, wait a minute. So if they were that bad, why was their explosive play rate like actually ranked relatively high, like at number 58? Well, the answer there is because when you can get five yards on any play that you want to, you don't have to bust 50 yarders all the time. Like you come out, yeah. you run the clock, and you just get out of there. Uh, and that's what everybody did against Akron last year. Uh, you look at the defense, the secondary is the best unit, but it's not great. The front seven is severely lacking this year. Uh, and this was the issue last year. They were next to last in, in FBS and PBA per drive, what I just talked about. Um, they're only number 105 in roster strength, according to the guys over at CFB Winning Edge. Uh, they did bring in a new defensive coordinator, right? And obviously, you're going to bring in a new staff when you're Joe Moorhead. But Moorhead brought an analyst from Oregon with him named Nick Toth. And once you got into March, Nick Toth left for Air Force uh, to be a position coach. So Moorhead had to bring in Tim Tibisar. I'm hoping I say that right, who was fired as the defensive coordinator in the middle of the year last year at Oregon State. So the defense is going to have to improve consistency and success here. That's a big issue. Uh, the offense... You know, it's it's Moorhead. Like, we got to figure out what they got. Um, they got big losses, obviously. The quarterback, Watts, that's a big loss. Uh, quarterback, Zach Gibson, you know, at the end of the year last year, he wasn't the guy, but he's, you know, it would have been nice to have had him. Linebacker, Michael Scott, and the wide receiver, Kanata Mumfield, who left to go to Pitt, by the way. Nobody talks about that. Pitt took their uh, best wide receiver. Uh, regardless, their top players, uh, the quarterback, DJ Irons, they brought in running back Cam Wiley from Minnesota. I think that's going to be awesome. And then the wide receiver, Shockey Jacques Luis from Pitt. That's going to be a pretty cool swap there. Uh, the corner or the quarterback, DJ Irons. Chris, I don't know if you've seen this guy. He is six foot six, two hundred fifteen pounds. Um, I think that he is going to do a lot of what Moorhead has done everywhere he's gone. He's going to run the quarterback quite a bit. Uh, Irons averaged eleven point four carries per game last year. I don't think this is going to be an overnight success. On this, the roster is just not good enough. It's a big, big rebuilding job, and I think that Joe just wanted to be the head coach again. Is that kind of what you feel on this one? Well, I think so, but I also think that he thinks he can win in the match. Like maybe not this year because it's obviously going to be a rebuilding year, but I, I think in a you know in a year or two, I don't think they're super far away from being competitive, from being there because of the transfer portal. Because of, I think, his ability to coach guys up from an offensive standpoint, I, I think they're going to be okay this year. I think they're going to struggle to get two wins. That's that's where I am. <laughs> they're, uh, hey, their non-conference schedule, by the way, they open with St. Francis, so you should open up with a win. That should be good. Yeah, you know, start off one and get your W. Then you sure. play at Michigan State, at Tennessee, at Liberty. You got Bowling Green coming in at home. Like, that's going to open up your Mac play is Bowling Green at home. Um, going to be – this is going to be interesting. It's going to be an interesting that's, year. That's your chance. That's your chance to get a win. You got that right. St. Francis right there. I've got them going 2-10. Hey. and 10. Like, I got them beating Bowling Green, but I don't – you know, I, I just – I think Same somewhere thing. they are going to get a, a Mac win. I just don't They'll know where to They'll find a win because I think, Joe, I think Joe is a good coach. And I think yeah. this is the level where he can not just be successful – but he could be long-term successful. I think he's tried his hand with the big boys at Mississippi State, didn't work out, and and I think this is a place that he can, you know, not only find success, but but find real success. And uh, 
and, and be one of those long-term <laughs> Matt coaches for, for a while and build something. I, I think you're right there. Uh, I'll tell you what he's going to fix off like right off the bat. The rushing success rate for this bunch last year was number 93 in the country. Uh, you bring in Cam Wiley. You let DJ Irons do his thing. I would imagine they are going to fix that pretty easy. They, they should be better than the three yards per carry that this team was last year. Uh, along with that, you know, I, can the defense make stops, right? Defensive explosive rate was decent, again, like I said. Um, but other teams, they are going to have to find a way to slow down some teams on defense. I don't know that they've got the personnel to do it. Uh, I just don't think they'll do that this year. No, I don't think so. I, I've got them 2-10. and 10. Uh, you have you got the same thing. Same thing. Same and like thing. I said, I, I'm assuming it's the Bowling Green team because I don't think they're very good. But, you know, I think they'll win a game. I think he's good enough to catch somebody. Oh, the Mac's always crazy. I would imagine once we get into November, like they've, you know, they'll get somebody. They've got Eastern Michigan at home. They play at Buffalo. You know, they'll, they'll find somebody that they can beat. And who knows? I mean, Ohio – like, maybe that's a team uh, after that Bowling Green game. They can come in there and get one of those. They, I think it's possible that they win uh, several of these games. I just don't find it likely as of yet. That's right. So, Oh, yeah. No, I'm not saying it's not possible. And we've been real wrong on this show in the past. About <laughs> we teams. certainly have. So We'll be pulling this for This conference him. last year. Yeah. yeah. No, no. We like Joe. and We want, we want to see him do better. But yeah, I'd like the Mac to get back to being fun. You got that right. But right now. I just don't think it is, man. I don't think it's fun like it used to be. No, it's it's not the same that it was. This in, is one of those yeah. conferences that has not done a very good job of staying relevant and evolving with the game. As the game has gotten more fast-paced and explosive, the MAC has stayed in the mud, slowing the game down, um, and, and, and haven't evolved to a more athletic style of football. And uh, and I think that's hurt them. I think that's hurt them a lot because you see these Mountain West teams, you see the American, and you know the MAC didn't used to take a second place to any G five school in no. the past, and now and now they they're falling like crazy. It like, is it's strange. Teams that yeah. are a lot better than them. It's strange how it is uh, how it's turned over, right? At, ever since PJ Fleck and, went undefeated, uh, this this league has not been the same. Not been the same. That's right. Uh, but you never know. We might talk about some good things once we get into the Mac West. You never know. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.